Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Learn Lightroom CC, also known as Lightroom in the Cloud. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you convert and process a black and white image. Of course, there's a lot of reasons why you may prefer an image to be black and white. Most often you'll just look at the scene and think it's going to be very compelling when rendered monochrome. A secondary reason is that the color image just might not look right. And that's the reason why I chose this image. This is a Fujifilm RAW file. You can see it's a Fujifilm from a Fujifilm X-T1. And now and then I found with my X-T1, the scene out of the camera is rendered very blue. There's no processing done on this image at all, nothing. And this is so the straight raw file, and you can see how it's kind of blue. Now I could come in and color correct for the problem. I would most often click on this color tab and probably grab the eyedropper and pick a spot that's neutral gray and click on it and see what that looks like in that you know, made it maybe a little bit too warm, but it at least color corrected most of that blue out of there. So you can, you know, correct for it usually if your camera rendered the scene uh, color wise or color temperature wise improperly. It's relatively easy to do, but probably equally easy, if not easier, is to actually just process the image in black and white. To do that in Lightroom, there's a couple different ways you can do it. The most common way, and the way we're going to start with, is simply go up to the top of the Edit panel, and you'll see right here is black and white. And when you click on that, it will automatically render your image in monochrome. And you can see that it's improved the image considerably. Now you could process from this point on. So in this case, I'll go down to the Light tab. And I'll probably open up those shadows a little bit. It's a little dark, don't you think, down here in the bottom part of the image? Maybe open that up a little bit. Kind of equalize the highlights a little bit. Maybe I'll just bring ex entire exposure up a touch as well. Uh, let's see. We could add a, my white point. I'm holding the Alter Option key. Now, we covered this in a previous video for those of you that are just tuning in for this series for the first time and wondering what I'm doing. Uh, to get my white point, I'm holding the Alt or Option key, and it's Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac. And my taste to adjust it is I would move it to the right until I see some white bleeding through, and then I back it off to that white is all gone. It's just the way I do it. Then similarly, I'll hold the Alt or Option key, and for the black slider, move that to the left. And personally, I like a little bit of the black coming through that's called, I'm clipping black. I prefer that. So that is how I would adjust the light tab of the adjustment panel. Um, now, there's a, other ways you could better affect the various tones in the image when you have your image converted to black and white. And that is under this color tab. So we're going to open that up. I'm going to close the light tab down. So we have this uh, color tab open. The one of the ways you could affect the tones is with the color temperature sliders. Now, it is black and white, so you would think that color temperature might not do anything, but it does. Especially the temp slider. You'll see as I move it, it really affects the tone in the image. You can see when it's far to the left, you can see how it's washing out the sky and water. And as I move it to the right, it changes the image. So you could come in and move this tint slider to a maybe a more desirable point. Tint will do similarly to the image, but not quite as much. So in this case, it is doing quite a bit, but it, it's been my experience that the tint slider usually doesn't affect the image quite as much as the temp slider. But either way, you could adjust these uh, two sliders uh, to, um, to taste, you know, to somewhere that you like. But the main processing that's done when you uh, convert an image to black and white is with what was formerly the color panel. If you click right here, it was called color mixer when we had a color image. 
Uh, for example, if I turn that off, you see how it says color mixer? Now I'll go back to the black and white. Now it's called the black and white mixer. And what this allows you to do is pick specific colors in the image and adjust the brightness level, level of those colors. Now, for example, we know the sky is blue. So I'll go to the blue slider. And if I move it to the left, anything that's blue in the image will get darker. If I move it to the right, anything that is blue in the image will get brighter. So we could come in and bring down blue a little bit to darken up the sky. Uh, there's some green grass and trees in here. Green and yellow will most, um, most affect the green grass and the green trees. So we'll go with yellow first and see what that does. And you can see just how it's brightening up in here. Watch. Right? Kind of fuzzes out when I adjust that. It's kind of an effect, uh, something that Adobe should fix, um, as you can see. Now I'll go to green, and you can see how it's darkening the green and brightening the green. So you could just adjust that, and you could experiment with others. Is there any red in the image? And there seems to be uh, those buildings, a red brick. So we could adjust that. See if orange, orange is affecting the buildings as well. We adjusted yellow, green, aqua should adjust the water, making that a little brighter. We did blue already. Oh, let's see if there's any purple. Purple's affecting the sky a little bit. Not in a way that I like. And magenta. Is there any magenta? Yeah, the buildings are being affected by agenda. magenta <laughs> a little bit. So you could see how you could affect um, just the tones in the image with the black and white mixer. Um, so it's a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, ability, I guess, you have to really adjust your image. Uh, there is before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So you could see that we really dramatically adjusted the image. And, and it took me two minutes and really only part of me is doing it. With, <laughs> the main part of my brain is talking to you and I'm just kind of doing these uh adjustment subconsciously so you could see that it's very easy to do now there is an auto button right here you could click there and it will give you an auto uh, black and white mix if you prefer so you could click there and you could see that's like what Lightroom thinks is a balanced black and white mix personally I don't like that so I'm gonna hit command Z to back out of that uh, it's control Z if you have a PC and they will bring you back one step. So that is how you would adjust the tones in your black and white image. Now, one thing I just want to make uh, sure I mention is when you have a black and white image, often we like to take that black and white image and add grain to it. That adjustment is under the effects tab and it's down here at the bottom. So you could move this to the right and add grain to the image. A lot of people like to make it look like an older black and white image. So you can move that. I also want to remind you that there was the um, adjustment for split toning that we covered in our previous video that you could come in, even though it's a black and white image, you could adjust the tones in that image if you want with the black and white or with the split toning. So you can make it kind of a, you know, kind of that old uh, kind of film look or something, if you like. Um, personally, I don't care for that on this image, so I'm not going to use it, but I wanted to remind you of that. Now, I did mention that there is a couple different ways you could do this. Uh, this is probably the most common way, and most people would agree, probably the best way to go about adjusting an image to monochrome because it gives you the most uh, the greatest ability to affect the different tones in your image with the black and white mixer and with your white balance sliders temp and tint. So you could really come in and adjust these tones. Now there is other ways to do it. If we turn this back into color, um, the other way you could do it is you could take saturation and pull that all the way down. Unfortunately, a lot of people do that, but you don't have the same ability to adjust the tones because you can see our color mixer is staying 
uh, as the color mixer. It's not the black and white mixer. So affecting luminance on these different uh, colors has no effect on anything at all. So this um, turning saturation all the way down might not be the, um, the best way to go as far as adjusting your image to black and white. Now, the final way you could do this is you could um, go to a profile. And I ad advise you to go to a profile first, meaning don't adjust your light adjustments and your color adjustments, whatever, and then pick your profile. Pick your profile early in your processing. So uh, you could go up here and you could see there's Adobe Monochrome. So let's say we just pick this. You could, you know, pick any black and white profile you have, but let's go with Adobe Monochrome. You could pick anything. If you have um, any of my um, profiles that you purchased for me, you could pick one of those, whatever. Just the point is we're making this black and white with a profile. So um, we're happy with that. We'll go back. You could come in and you could adjust your uh, lights and blacks. You could come to the color and you could do the tint um, or temperature and tint sliders. That will affect that. You could come here and do the same thing here with your black and white mixer. So you could, um, in most cases, adjust everything. There may be some profiles, though, that won't allow you to or won't bring up the black and white mixer. They're going to show the color mixer. It's just to how the profile was made uh, but you could do that so definitely pick your profile uh, that you're going to use early in your processing um, uh, kind of um, flow workflow so do it early because then you could come in and better uh, fine-tune your black and white image to your taste so couple different ways you could adjust an image to black and white. I think you'll agree that the black and white image for this specific image looks a lot better than any rendering of color that I probably would have come up with. Thank you everyone for watching my video series Learn Lightroom CC. If you could do me a favor and like and share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. Also, in the description below this video will be a link to my website. Come visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find all kinds of free photography how-to articles and videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.